Hey everyone, I'm excited to bring you this super awesome episode on spermidine. Have you heard of this? I know the name is a little weird. <laughs> We're going to go into it on the show, um, but I've been hearing amazing things about spermidine and the longevity space. And Leslie is so informed on it. She's going to go all into the details. This is a really exciting thing. Um, you'll hear me mention a couple of times in the episode, and I will say it again here in the intro, like she is glowing. Like I just looking at her picture before the interview, I was like texting it to my friends. I'm like, Holy cow. Like, look how healthy this woman looks like she is just glowing. Um, and she talked, that wasn't always the story. She's going to talk about how she got here. Um, she was a Southern Californian entrepreneur, a Berkeley and Harvard business school graduate. She was over in China, killing business, doing awesome. And she got diagnosed with lupus and rheumatoid rheumatoid arthritis in her thirties. She talks about overcoming that and then getting on this longevity train. She became a bulletproof coach. And now, you know, through life, she married a man from the UK and she lives in Oxford now and just meeting friends at the, at the playground, her kids, uh, friends, parents, they are a bunch of Oxford health researchers and she got to know them. And now she's brought her entrepreneur and business side to the table to help bring something so amazing to the market. So if you don't know about spermidine, you're going to know about all about spermidine after this episode. So we'll go ahead and get right into it. Um, make sure you check out the links. If you want to find out more, um, it's oxfordhealthspan.com. I'll put those in the show notes on YouTube and all audio platforms, but we'll go ahead and jump in. Here is Leslie Kinney. Before we jump into the show, I am extremely honored to share with you the sponsor of this podcast, and that is Rep Provisions. And I want to tell you a little bit about who they are, what they're about. They are a regenerative agriculture company. They are a ranch. I have been to the ranch myself. Incredible. And if you aren't familiar with regenerative agriculture, it is my extreme honor to introduce you. So here's a few statistics of why regenerative agriculture is important before I get into what it is. First of all, the United States is losing topsoil 10 times faster then it's replenishing it right now. And this comes from our modern conventional agriculture practices that we've really just developed in the last several decades. The way we are raising cattle and the way we are growing these monocrops of plants is depleting our topsoil at astronomical rates. And I love the way Eric Perner, the founder uh, and owner of Rep Provisions, the rancher there at the ranch, I love how he puts this. He says that our planet is just a giant rock spinning in space with a tiny layer of topsoil and subsoil that supports all life on the planet. Every economy, every nation is sustained by this layer of topsoil. It's really important, right? We don't have any soil or quality soil. Health goes down and then eventually life goes away, right? So it's, it's so important. Um, right now, we're losing about 75 billion tons of topsoil every year because as it erodes from these conventional farming practices, it goes into the waterways and then goes into the ocean and we lose it. So it's not sustainable, obviously. And we have to regenerate the topsoil. And this is where regenerative agriculture comes in. And the way they raise their animals is supportive of regeneration of the topsoil. So you can listen to my podcast episode with Eric Perner if you want to learn more about exactly how they do it. It's so important. Now, from a health perspective, this is so cool. Um, Eric just shared with me that they had their meat lab tested at Michigan State University. And if you're not familiar with omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, let me share this with you real quick. So omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. They're in all foods. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. So this is all foods have a certain ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Now, the ideal is one-to-one, -one, right? So we balance out that pro-inflammatory aspect of food, which is important. It triggers a lot of things in our body, but we balance it with the anti-inflammatory effect. On average, Americans are 10-to-1. Their omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is 10-to-1 because, honestly, we eat so much canola oil and so many processed foods and all the way up to 30 to one and higher. It's super inflammatory, causes heart disease, cancer, all disease. Um, grain fed meat is on average five to one ratio or worse. And what came back from Michigan State University is that rep provisions meat has a one to one omega six to omega three ratio, which is freaking huge. Um, so, so cool. I'm so glad they found that out. And by the way, just FYI, grain fed chicken has a 15 to one ratio and seed oils are the worst like canola. Um, so we mean all these industrial seed oils, 70 to one 
or worse. And they estimate that 25% of the calories in the American diet come from canola oil. No wonder there's so much disease. No wonder everyone's so unhealthy. So just wanted to share that with you guys. This is not only an amazing way to support the planet, but also your own health. Um, and they're giving you guys an awesome discount. It's one of the highest discounts they offer 15% off anything with code coach Tara. So I'll link that in the show notes, or you can go to repprovisions.com anytime and just use the coupon code coach Tara and get 15% off. All right, Leslie, I told you, we're going to just jump right in. Can you tell everybody what spermidine is? And we'll get all into the details of how you found it and all of that. But what, what is this? Cause I know, I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, yeah. what did she just say? What she Especially just say? you guys. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. everyone asked me, where does it come from? All right. So let's just get one thing out of the way. Everyone that you can see around you and that includes your dogs and your cats and your grandparents and your mom and your dad, they all produce spermidine. Your potted plant, your fig tree, they all, the Christmas tree, they all produce spermidine. So this is something that is so important to life that it is manufactured by all of these things. And in humans, we manufacture um, this very intriguingly called molecule. We manufacture it in our tissues and in our gut, but we also get it from the food we eat. And what it is, is a trigger for a process called autophagy or self-eating. And that is the body's in, innate ability to clean up its cells, recycle them, and then burn off the sort of trash, the trash bits from the cells and turn that into energy. So without autophagy, our cells really can't repair and replace themselves. So we need this to carry on throughout our lives in order to stay young, vibrant, and healthy. So we have it, of course, in our heart. Naturally, we have it in our reproductive organs from whence the name comes, because naturally it is found in seminal fluid in sperm and its purpose there is uh, twofold. One is that it's a very, very small molecule around which the DNA can wrap itself. So normally in the body, there's something called a histone bond, which is gigantic and DNA wraps itself around that and it travels through the body. But sperm is so tiny that it needs to take that DNA in rather than a gigantic suitcase, it wants a pocketbook. And the pocketbook is basically the spermidine and it can do all sorts of things. Imagine pulling out a Swiss army knife out of that pocketbook. You've got your DNA, but you've got this tool that can do lots of things. So spermidine is known as a pleiotropic um, molecule that can do many, many things in addition to autophagy, that cellular renewal process. So some of the other things that it does is it can protect DNA. So for instance, with sperm, when sperm is manufactured in the body, it's actually a very stressful event for the male body. And it creates a lot of reactive oxygen species. And in order to protect the, uh, the sperm, when they're made, you've got spermidine there to protect the DNA in the sperm. Wow. I did yes. not know that. Is that why they say that men age faster if they ejaculate more yes. in their lifetime because it's like, yes. it's oxidating, it's aging. <laughs> wow. Well, so, so this is, this is a theory. It has not yet been proven. Okay. Yet, okay. But, um, it is, it of course is an old Taoist, um, is an old Taoist theory that men who are older should not ejaculate um, too many times. There's actually a formula, a little algorithm you can put in your age and it will pop out with, you should only ejaculate X number of times <laughs> if you are that age, right? So only so many times per month, something like that. Interesting. And I know that there are a few biohackers who said they tried this. Yeah. They like Dave kept... Asprey wrote about yeah, that in his Game yeah. Changers book. It was really interesting. <laughs> exactly. And how he felt depressed afterwards. Yeah. And I'm not surprised if you actually look at human sperm, there's so much good stuff in there naturally, because it's trying to procreate the next generation, right? right? So you have everything from magnesium, vitamin C, glutathione, wow. and again, a ton of spermidine. Wow. So um, because spermidine has this sort of, you know, this uh, pleiotropic uh, effect in the body, in addition to, to protecting DNA, it can do things like um, trigger mitophagy. And that yeah. is where you 
actually take your mitochondria, the powerhouses of the cell, and you do that sort of deep cleaning, you know, recycling, burning off of the old stuff and making it brand new. You do that to the mitochondria. So That's mitophagy huge. is really interesting. It's huge, right? And interestingly, cardiomyocytes in the heart, which preferentially take that up and allow the heart to have that rhythmic beat, um, the heart also benefits from having the mitochondria and the heart um, get repaired through this process of mitophagy too. Uh, so these other wow. effects that spermidine can trigger are called the hallmarks of, of um, well, in this case would be the hallmarks of longevity. So there are nine hallmarks of aging and spermidine inhibits six people who say that spermidine inhibits all of them. And in fact, I was talking to the author of a well-known paper um, on reversing aging. His name is Brian Kennedy at the National University of Singapore. I was talking to him the other day and he said, yeah, you know, probably, probably hits pretty much all of them. And well, I just real quick to interject, it cut out for just a second. It's the only time it's cut out, but you, um, yeah. what you were saying there is it inhibits six of them, but likely possibly all of the all of marks of aging. Yeah, exactly. What are they? What are, do you, can you list them all? <laughs> yes, I will list them all. And I'm going to get my glasses on so that I can, you know, I don't leave any out. So um, first one is epigenetic changes. And of course, as health coaches, we're always talking to our clients about how they can change their lifestyle because this yeah. hits their epigenome. But Spermidine can do this too. Wow. The second thing is something called impaired proteostasis. So there are proteins in the cell that need to be folded a certain way in order to lock onto other proteins and do certain functions. I like to think of them as sort of Lego yeah. bricks. Yeah. And if they're malformed, they can't do that latching on. So that is impaired proteostasis. Wow. And um, I noticed another, this real yeah. quick. Sorry, just I was at the yeah. biohacking conference a couple months ago in Florida, and yeah. I noticed the protein folding thing is really big in the longevity space right now. So spermidine can help with the protein folding. Yep, wow. absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, proper protein folding and function um, is actually important because these proteins act as transporters in the cell mm -hmm. to help maintain cellular homeostasis or balance, right? Yeah, right. So that is, okay. that is quite important, yeah. Then I mentioned mitochondrial function, they help with that, but they also help with stem cell function. What? Yeah, stem cells, kind of important, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Especially because you can't get them right now yeah. <laughs> the stem cells because, you know, we kind of going to put that into the Western medicine realm. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but it's a little bit frustrating for all of us biohackers out there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Helping your own natural stem cell production is huge. Um, yeah, okay. exactly. And that, and that is something that I don't want people to forget is that there are ways yeah. to pack the body's own ability to yeah. upregulate stem cells. Yeah. They even say that, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with blood flow restriction or blood flow yeah. moderation. I work do you with know the, a company. Yeah. Do you know the Katsu guys? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, Katsu uh, not only upregulates a growth hormone, but it also, they believe helps with stem cells too. So I believe there are studies going on in China on that. Um, yeah. They were doing that with animals. I saw the videotapes of the animals, these little goats who had tiny um, katsu yeah. blood flow restriction bands on cool. their back legs. It was, yeah, it was very, very interesting. Yeah. But, I've used um, katsu and also be strong. And I'm a huge fan of blood yeah. flow restriction. It's so, yeah. such an intelligent uh, uh, way to train. So the, yeah, you guys can find yeah. more information about that on, That's um, right. on, on uh, my Instagram. I have a bunch of stuff on there, but yeah, katsu global is on Instagram or be strong training. They're both great be strong, resources. Exactly. Jim Stray Gunderson used to be over at uh, katsu too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, uh, the natural stem cell production, you can help with fasting as, as far exactly. as I know. And so yep. a lot of what I'm hearing from spermidine is it kind of mimics that like caloric restriction. It is a caloric restriction mimetic. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, okay. But in addition, it has these other, these other benefits. So one of them is that it helps with telomere length wow. and that is, that is actually new. Uh, that's something that we didn't know until about wow. a year ago. And so that's a very, you know, a very new thing. Now there are three additional hallmarks of aging that we've been thinking, can it help with these three? So in this okay. particular 
paper that Brian Kennedy co-authored with Linda Partridge and Matthias Fuente Alba of University College London, they said that spermidine did not help with these other three. And then speaking with Kennedy directly, sort of mm, maybe, probably. So these would be DNA protection and repair. We know that it does protect DNA because it does that with sperm. But if you say DNA repair, that is the bit that we need to learn about. Okay. The next one would be altered nutrient sensing. Now, one thing we know is that it seems to have improved in the insulin response in young men in a new study that's come out. So cool. that would then be that altered nutrient sensing. Yeah. So again, TBD, but yeah. more studies exciting. are coming up. Yeah. It's exciting. And then the third thing is the big one, that's cellular senescence. So is mm. spermidine a senolytic? And that's kind of the holy grail. Everybody's wondering about that. And one of our uh, one of our scientific advisors, Professor Katja Simon here at Oxford University, she's an immunologist. She has a grant. She's looking at this over the next three years. So there is definitely going to be more out on how it works with those hallmarks of aging, in addition to the fact that it triggers autophagy. Very cool. Thank you for sharing those. And guys, if yeah. you're not watching on YouTube, if you're listening to this on audio, <laughs> I was telling Leslie before we started, I literally like texted her picture to my friends. I'm like, <laughs> I look how healthy she looks. I will listen to anything she has to say. And this wasn't always the case for you. Can you share how you came, uh, how, how you came to know about spermidine, your story? Yeah, sure. Um, so <laughs> my story with biohacking um, started when I was 39 years of age, the exact same age that my father died at. Wow. And I had been, I'd been running an online matchmaking company in Asia Pacific, living wow. in Hong Kong and really burning the candle at both ends, had venture capital, the whole nine yards and, uh, moved to the United States and, was told I was trying to start a family, did leave it a little late at age 39 <laughs> and was, uh, was told first by the doctors, oh, well, first you're infertile. So we're going to have to go with IVF. But secondly, I had some pain in my hands. I couldn't use doorknobs, couldn't turn faucets. I was having trouble typing at the keyboard and went to the doctor thinking, not sure what this is. And she gave me that call that no one ever wants to receive where it's actually the doctor who calls you and says, yeah. instead of the nurse giving you your results <laughs> and them saying, oh, they're going to actually mail these to you. It's the doctor who says, right. Could you please come in? I'd like to speak with you about your results. And yeah, I was thinking, shoot. this is really, really, this has got to be important. So right. I went to see the, uh, the doctor who said, look, I'm very sorry, but you've got lupus. And I'd never heard of lupus before. Wow. Then she said, and you also have rheumatoid arthritis. And I thought, well, this is like, you know, collecting characters for a happy meal, right? You know, <laughs> And you've got Ronald McDonald, the hamburger, <laughs> what is next? It's with autoimmune conditions, right. just sort of, you know, right. Okay. Just throw another one in there. Right. Totally. We'll have the whole collection. And uh, she said, I can give you these drugs. I think we started with Humira. We can, I can give you these drugs for rheumatoid arthritis, but I can't give you anything for lupus because there is no cure. And I said, well, wait, wait, wait a second. Everything is right. Marie Forleo, everything is figure outable. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I think Americans have this attitude. Surely we can figure this out. Right. Put a man on the moon. We must be able to do this. And she said, there's really, there's really nothing we can do. So I of course went into denial and said, maybe this test is wrong. Is there a chance the test could be wrong? Maybe we need to do it again. Yeah. And I she would said, be the same. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so she gave me this look, um, oh, right. You know, sympathetic look, <laughs> this person really wants to believe that this is wrong. Right, I right, will right. humor them. Of course we can do it again, but I want you to know <laughs> that your cytokine levels, your tumor necrosis, alpha levels, your C-reactive protein, these are all so high mm -hmm. that it's very unlikely. And then I said, but I am doing a round of IVF, you know, we're doing, we're going to be doing donor eggs soon. I need to be healthy. And yeah. she just looked at me and said, 
you know, you really need to think about this because five years of energy to take care of kids, you probably have five years. And I just thought, wow, whoa, right? <sighs> You're a mother. If somebody told you that at age 39, oh man. It's right? a good thing you're mentally tough because that would destroy a lot of people emotionally. <laughs> well, I was just, I suspended belief, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of our natural yeah. protections in right. a case like that. No, right. no, I can't believe this. This is wrong. Uh, they have a lot of wonderful certificates hung up on the wall behind them, but no, this is not right. I'm going to find another doctor who's going to well, give me a better I mean, answer. <laughs> in what we know about the body and the, how much our biology is controlled by our minds, like, I don't think that's actually a bad move. You know, it's like, yeah. no, I'm going to find a solution here. Like, yeah. I'm not going to just take this as like a freaking death sentence to my yeah. life on, on like just even a emotional level either, you know, so <laughs> protective yeah. mechanism or not, um, let's hear where it took you. <laughs> well, so, you know, fast forward a few years, I later discover, well, you know, first of all, we have to talk about the fact that in the next few months, I threw the kitchen sink at my lifestyle. I did yeah. everything because right. when you're told you have a finite number of Right. days on the planet, you right. start cleaning house right away. So <laughs> I started meditating. I started journaling. I started writing letters to my, you know, to my deceased father to kind of bring right. closure to any kind of trauma. Yeah. I uh, would walk in the Rocky mountains, which is where I was living at the time. Cool. I did, I changed my diet entirely. I went on the zone anti inflammatory inflammatory diet by Dr. Barry Sears, which was big at that time. So that was uh -huh. 2004 when I was diagnosed. And I also did a therapy that was new, a traditional allopathic therapy called intravenous immunoglobulin. And I think a lot of autoimmune patients, even today, don't know about this. Mm -hmm. So intravenous immunoglobulin, you need probably two infusions. It was about $12,000 each. So 24K. Wow. My insurance did pay for it. Hmm. The idea is that it brings the immune system, a dysregulated immune system back to homeostasis. Huh. And that was exactly what I needed. And that wow. I do, I have to give it some credit. I have no idea what works when you do all of these different things. Right. You honestly don't care. You just want yourself to be better. And I didn't feel right. I had the time to just do, right. I'm only going to do one thing and then see if it works. Right. I did everything. Well, and I, I just have to say, I think that's so important because if there's one thing we know as health professionals, it's not a, it's not a single action that yeah. quote unquote makes you healthy. You know, yeah. we are such complex beings, our bodies, our souls, all of it intertwined together. And yes, absolutely healing trauma and meditating and being in nature and connecting to yourself and saying no to people and yeah. to your environment and eating better and being happy, seeking joy, uh, all play into healing. Just, I think just as much as, you know, having some awesome antioxidant or, you know, a different supplement, yes. like it's so complex, you know, it'd be yes. awesome if it was that easy. I would love it if we could just push one button and just change things, but we are complex systems. So I think, you know, the answer there is, yeah, it, it was all of it. <laughs> it yeah, was a lot. Exactly. Of it. It's holistic. We are right. really complex organisms. And just right. like Dr. Dale Bredesen says, you know, you can't just think of Alzheimer's as a single a single hole in a leaky roof. There are right. 20 sacks. You plug one and there are just 25 other right. things and it all, you know, works synergistically. Yeah. So whatever I did seems to have worked because I then went back to the doctor. We tested again and she looked at the results and she said, well, it must've been a blip. And I said, <laughs> would you like to know what I did? Yeah. I'm sure so many patients must do this when they're able to turn their health around. Yeah. And she said, Oh yeah, that's okay. Ah, what? It happens a lot though. I have oh, talked to other patients. They I say the same I thing. Handle it. No. no one's ever interested. Oh, I can't. I just can't understand that uh, lack of curiosity and wanting to get, um, like put more tools in your tool belt of possible ways to help people. It's just mind boggling to me. Well, and a qu quick question. Yeah. How long was this between those two appointments? 
it was either three months or six months. Wow, I can't so remember now. I honestly can't remember. It is fast. Wow. It was fast. It was incredible. I suppose it probably was around six months, but that isn't long, especially when you're told you have yeah. five years left. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll just wow. turn this around. So then the question for me was, wait a second, you just told me with great authority because you yeah. are wearing that jacket yeah. and you do have the certificates. And believe me, I love doctors, but yeah. it is intimidating right. when you as a patient go in and a medical professional says you are A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, you know, you are infertile, you are an autoimmune patient, you are life limited, you have, you know, these faults. And when I realized that I had turned this around, I just thought, but only a few months ago, I was sent this gigantic box of these syringes full of Enril or Humira, and I had to inject them into my belly. What was that about? Because if I hadn't protested, if I hadn't tried to do the work and seen that I could actually affect change, wow, I'd still be on those. And I have totted up the cost of all of those Mm -hmm. medicines Mm. since 2004. And I would have spent, because they're about $5,000 a month, it would have been a million US dollars. Now that is either for me to bear or for my insurance company to bear. No matter whose burden it is, that money could be invested someplace else. And I'm frankly grateful that my insurance company didn't have to pay it. And also, of course, that I didn't have to personally pay it. Yeah. But this is this, you know, the chronic disease epidemic is going to bankrupt Western economies unless we do something about it. And I think health coaches are at the forefront. You will know it. You work with these patients day in and day out and give them what they need to actually make these lifestyle changes and then connect with the doctors who are willing to try other therapies. So how I discovered spermidine was me thinking, okay, intravenous immunoglobulin, allopathic treatment, very valuable, probably played into my cure. Yeah. How do I help bring something like that to patients faster? Yeah. And when I moved to Oxford, England, which is where my husband is from, I just started meeting other mothers and fathers at the playground where my kids were. And I'd say, oh, what are you doing here? A lot of, there are a lot of people from all over the world here. And they'd say, oh, I'm working on this. And it could be vaccine. It could be, um, you know, stem cells could be immunology, could be whatever, there are so many interesting scientists in Oxford. Mm. So I began to collect a Rolodex of interesting people who were just friends. You know, th- yeah. this is sort of mom's coffee morning. Right. And one time I said to someone, wow, you know, that stem cell work you're doing, that regenerative medicine is super cool. What are you yeah. going to do with it? Oh, well, yeah. I'm not sure well, you need to raise money for it, right? You need to do something with it. Oh, well, yeah. we might. we're going to write some grants. And that is what tends to be done in these university towns. Okay, we're going to write some grants. And I thought, no, 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 this could be funded, <laughs> right? You could definitely- Oh, what a perfect some... storm <laughs> with your background. You're like, hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on. Let me exactly. help you guys here. <laughs> exactly. But regenerative medicine is kind of the stepchild because- for number one, this is an ethical issue, right? We're not supposed to want to live longer because wow. then we're taking away the opportunities from younger people. Wow. And especially in Great Britain, there is this thing, we've probably seen the tea towels that say, keep calm and carry on, stiff yeah. upper lip. So people really did not understand this idea of regenerative medicine. Why would you want to live longer? That's just ethically wrong. Wow. But my feeling is I want to live healthy for as long as possible yes. and thereby save all these other younger generations, the bill, the medical right. bill, the caretaking bill, the bill for being in a wraparound 24 hour seven uh, care home for Alzheimer's or dementia. I right. want to find, I want to avoid that. Yeah. And so I started fundraising for some of these companies, which were Mm. very, they were very fun 
everything from ketones to uh, stem cell uh, stem cell use and uh, also potentiation of stem cells. And someone at a fund, a large fund here in Oxford said to me, hey, you know, Leslie, you're, you're a health coach. I've heard your story. And I think there's someone you need to meet in the immunology department. And she's been working on this thing called spermidine. It's really interesting. It's pretty powerful. But it's never going to get any money because you can't patent it. It's just a mm. naturally occurring thing. Right. In addition, she tried to get a patent for its use with, I'm not, I'm not sure, am I allowed to use the word V-A-C dot, dot, dot. <laughs> she, yeah. she got a patent for that in 2014. And then the patent lapsed because the university wanted her to pay for it. And she's like, I'm just an academic. I don't have the money for this. Mm. So it laughs. It becomes known as prior art. And therefore you cannot patent that use again. Oh, wow. So I thought, okay, interesting. Nobody is going to try and commercialize this because there's no way to protect it. Right. I'm a bit of a rebel. I'll take a look at it. Yeah. Okay, let's look at her research. And the more I looked at the research, the more convinced I was that there was something there. Now, bear in mind that most of the research was done in animals at that point. So mice were being treated with this, but all the mice that got this, they stayed skinny, they had glossy coats, they had better libido, mm. they were better at their mazes. You know, this is animal testing to make them hotter, faster, smarter, better, right? Yeah. <laughs> the best kind of animal testing. And there were some studies showing that it was helping with neurocognition. Mm. Uh, in particular, even in individuals who had been diagnosed with subjective cognitive decline. And if you follow Dr. Dale Bredesen's work, you'll know that once you've got subjective cognitive decline, that is not early stage, that is late. Yeah. So that intrigued me. And I wanted to get it from my mom. It was available in Europe. I wanted to get it to my mom in the United States and I could not get it there. Mm. And I thought this is ridiculous. I knew it was abundant in a Japanese, a traditional Japanese dish called natto. Mm. Um, my mother can make it, but my stepfather can't stand the smell of it. Mm. And so I wanted to find a more convenient way for her to take it. The more I thought about it, the more I thought I should really just put this on the market. So I looked in Japan for the raw materials and you can get it in addition to natto, and for, which is fermented soybeans. Mm -hmm. You can also get it from highly concentrated wheat germ extract. So wheat germ is a source of spermidine. The mm. only thing is that it's also a source of omega-6 fatty acids, polyunsaturated mm. fatty acids, and they go rancid as soon right. as they are exposed to oxygen. Right. So I'm sure you know all about the industrial seed oils and how bad these are for us, how they right. shorten uh, uh, you know, the menstrual cycles of women of reproductive age. So I thought, okay, wheat germ, not going to cut it. And, but could I find it processed in a particular way to get rid of those polyunsaturated fatty acids? Because even in highly concentrated wheat germ extract, about 62% of that is going to just be omega-6 polyunsaturated mm -hmm. fatty acids. Oh, wow. It's a lot, <laughs> yeah. right? So yes, you do need to read your labels. You do need to look for ones that have been defatted. And so that was something that I really wanted to find. And I found it in Japan, which I was mm. thrilled about since, of course, the Nobel Prize in medicine or physiology in 2016 had been granted for autophagy and the discoveries around it to a Japanese scientist. So I thought, oh, this is all dovetailing nicely, right? Yeah. Autophagy is really all the science done in Japan, great leadership out of those labs uh, in Japan, and I'm getting the product from there. Put it on the market and away we go. So that's where we are 
today. Wow. I, that's such a cool story. How that, the, the, the path that that went, you know, what you <laughs> were doing in business then your own personal experience, then just landing in Oxford, being around all of these, you know, moms and dads that just happen to be research scientists on the exact thing that you had just had a huge life experience with. And then you being able to bring your skills back to the table now as a mom, like, it's just, that's such a cool story. And, and I know that your, your, your product is called Primadine and I have some that's questions right. on it. Cause like my mom yeah. has dementia. She's actually like in a nursing home. It's very, very progressed. And I I'm was wondering, like, thanks. It's, you know, it's, she had um, mental health issues her whole life and it, that can be very aging on the brain. And so now she's only 70, she just turned 71, you know? So she's pretty young. I, she seems that more like, young. she seems more like she's like 90, you know what I mean? Like wow. her, the aging that she's experienced, she had type two diabetes. She had a lot of trauma that was never healed and all of these things. And I'm curious, like, it, it, have you guys tested this on people who already have like progressive, uh, dementia or Alzheimer's, you know, is there, no. just... we, we haven't, we haven't done okay. that. Um, spermidine itself has been tested on those with subjective cognitive decline uh -huh. and on individuals who are in Alzheimer's okay. or dementia specific homes, but yeah. not that far along. Yeah. yeah just curious. Um, and I suppose that, you know, there's, there's interesting research around ketones because those of course yeah. cross the blood brain barrier too. Yep. Um, same with spermidine and I never want to give up hope. Yeah. I have no idea what can be done. I'm not right. a doctor. Right. Um, I suppose as a coach, we want to encourage our yeah. clients that, you know, yeah, go for it. Right. You yeah. have nothing to lose. And I suppose that if I had a loved one yeah. who had this, there is really nothing to lose from mm -hmm. trying things like ketones right. or um, or spermidine or omega threes, which are also right. part of the Bradison protocol. Um, I think he also uses curcumin. There's yeah. so many other vitamin yeah. D optimizing right. thyroid hormone. I think thyroid is yeah. quite a big one. And interesting that you mentioned the mental mm. health issues because mental health issues, for instance, bipolar was at one time treated with thyroid hormones. And interesting. then it just switched and it started going towards lithium and lithium, obviously as biohackers, we know that if you are micro dosing it, that it can have neurotropic yeah. effects. Right. And there are some who even say that it has longevity effects. And mm -hmm. actually Linda Partridge and Brian Kennedy will disagree about this. Brian doesn't like it. Linda does like it. If you ask Dale Bredesen about lithium, he will say no. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen mixed, mixed reviews on that. And I, I mean, I've even had it recommended me, to me for some of my DNA stuff. I've tried it, um, in, in small doses. I don't know that I, you know, I have like a strong opinion one way or the other yet. I'm kind of, I like to kind of like sit back and watch, try things out. Did I notice anything? You know, like, yeah. like I think the way of the biohackers, like I'll push yeah. the edge a little bit, but I'm also going to not jump to conclusions and I'm going to yeah. kind of just see what the, you know, common um, consensus is here as more and more people try these things. Um, yeah. I'm also curious if there is a certain age that you recommend people start trying spermidine. Right. So as we get older, just like our production of natural hormones, whether it's testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, DHEA, pregnenolone, melatonin, yeah. uh, even an antioxidant like glutathione, as we get older, we get less good at yep. manufacturing this. So we do have this wonderful pharmacy or multiple yeah. pharmacies in the body. And just, I don't know, people start slacking off and you do need to top some of those things off. So in the same way, spermidine stops, spermidine production starts to decline in both the gut biome and in our tissues. Now you can actually uh, kickstart production of spermidine in your gut biome by taking prebiotics. And that's why we put prebiotics cool. that selectively feed two of the types of bacteria in the gut that manufacture spermidine because very cool well why just forget about the factory why mm -hmm. not right give it yep. teach a man to fish right exactly yep i i helped formulate a collagen supplement and i'm like we have to put hyaluronic acid and vitamin c and all these things that help with our own endogenous production too yes. you know like why exactly. wouldn't you <laughs> exactly exactly um, right 
Okay. And so are you thinking, you know, obviously probably like <laughs> teenagers probably may not they need to need take spermidine, but yeah. if you're over 50, maybe, you know, is yeah. there a yeah. kind of so as you- for, for women, as you start going towards menopause, yes, then it makes yeah. sense. And you probably yeah. will see a difference. And for men, it probably happens later as their hormones, you yeah. know, slowly taper right. off. Right. Um, what I will say is that places where we see where we can actually see low spermidine would be in areas like um, poor hair growth, even hair graying, because one of the great things that spermidine does is it helps keep the hair follicle in the antigen or growth phase for Hmm. about 20% longer Hmm. time. So we're in the antigen, hair is in the antigen or growth phase for about three to seven years. And it kind of depends how old you are as you get older, that antigen window gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And it also, spermidine also helps kickstart the epithelial stem cells in the hair bulb. So it will start with new hairs growing. So when I look at some women who are starting to lose hair, I'm thinking two things, low thyroid, Mm -hmm. definitely check, and, Mm -hmm. or or maybe too much thyroid, um, and also probably low spermidine. So if you are biologically older. And Mm -hmm. as health coaches, we can actually look at people who walk down the street and sort of say, "Mm, I think there's there's inflammation. I think there's some thyroid thing going on there. I think that there's, you know, you Mm -hmm. know it. Mm -hmm. Those individuals then would benefit from spermidine, even if they are say under the age of 50. Okay. Thank you. And I, I I know I'm like embarrassing you, but (laughs) seriously guys, if you're not watching on YouTube, like your shirt, your hair is like so thick and shiny. You look like a Pantene commercial. So I'm like, I totally believe what you are saying. (laughs) Like it's insane. Um, one other thing I was wondering, um, is, you know, rapamycin is really big right now in the longevity space. Can you share how spermidine differs from rapamycin? They're, they're really quite similar to be really honest. And, uh, for me as an autoimmune patient, I just, you know, the same way that I was like, I don't want to take those boxes of Enbrel and Humira and rapamycin is an immune suppressant in the same way that yeah. Enbrel and Humira are. So rapamycin was developed to help transplant organ transplant patients, not reject the organs that mm. were donated to them. Mm. And uh, I just didn't want to do that. Yeah. Right. I wanted right. to make sure that my body could figure this out. It seemed to have figured it out before. And I just didn't want to touch my immune system. Right. Spermidine is completely natural. The body naturally produces spermidine. Yeah. It's in every plant. We eat yeah. it. Right. Yeah. All of these blue zone populations uh, of centenarians, healthy centenarians in Loma Linda, in Ikaria, in Okinawa, they all have higher spermidine Mm. blood plasma amounts and in their diet. So it appears to be correlated with healthy longevity. And we're not going around saying, oh, right, the body makes rapamycin. Yeah. Right. So that was, that was for me, that was my thing. I just, it's my personal choice. I know lots of biohackers use it. It does appear to do many of the similar things to spermidine, but I just, I'm the the same way. Like I'm not against metformin, you know, in longevity, it's very interesting, but like, I prefer berberine over metformin. I'd rather have something nature provided that's very similar than something we made because like, I was just having this conversation with my daughter last night. Like there's so much we don't know about the body. She was just going through this whole list. She's like, we don't even know what causes this or this, or that, you know, yeah, what causes women exactly. to go in labor? Like we don't. So it's like the less, I definitely don't. It's like, I, I, I the analogy, I love analogies. And I was like, it's like <laughs> me going over to somebody's car engine and I'm like, I'll fix it. Yeah. And like, yeah. <laughs> do you even know how this thing works? Uh, no, but like, I think I got a few things though. Like I got it. It's like, get, yeah. get away from my car, get away from my car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So well, I'm with you. I'm like, I trust nature a little bit more. I'm not against that's man-made right. things, but if I have the yeah. option, I'd rather go with nature. <laughs> so I wanted to go with something food derived because right. I know spermidine has great bioavailability. It has mm. higher molecular weight. It is very well absorbed in the gut. So I didn't have to worry about that. And the body recognizes food. Yeah. And for me, it's sort of like, 
I don't know, you may be too young for this, so I'm 56. But when I was a kid, there was this orange drink called Tang. Do you yeah, remember I know Tang? Tang. Oh, yeah, I had yeah, my Tang yeah. growing up. I'm from yeah, the South. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Tang, right? And oh, this t- went to the went with the men to Mars, and uh, not to Mars, to the moon. And uh, it's got all of these great things in it. It tastes just like orange juice. And now, as an you know, as a grown up, I'm thinking, why not just have orange juice? Isn't that right. the real thing? Maybe there are things that we have not yet discovered right. in orange juice that are not yet in Tang. Right. I like to say we're, we're not living in bunkers. Like the cold war is over. Like we don't need to be eating these yeah. shelf stable food right. replacements. Right. You know, I think that's when a lot of this stuff was, uh, brought to the world, you know, and, yeah. and people did, they didn't understand the health impacts of it. I look no. at like what's happened in the last 50 or so years. And I'm like, I don't think it was malicious. I think people just did not understand the health. Yeah. And they're like, this is great. This stays good on a shelf forever yeah. like, it's good for business. It's good for you at home. And we're like, like now yeah. we're learning. Nope. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> well, this is it. There's so much we don't know. And it, yeah. it's really interesting. I was talking to one of the, uh, one of the professors here at, at the university of Oxford. And he said, Oh, I, cause I said, why is there no nutrition department at Oxford? And he said, well, actually right after the second world war and all the victory gardens that got the country through the war, there was someone who wanted to donate 2 million British pounds to, which is like 3 million US dollars to the university to set up a nutrition department. And I said, my God, what happened? How come it's not here anymore? And he said, well, because at the time, it, nobody knew where to put it. And they decided that it would have to go into the new department of biochemistry, which was run by the famous Hans Krebs, who discovered the Krebs cycle in mitochondria to produce energy. And he probably, I'm thinking, he was thinking, right, biochemistry needs to establish itself. If I have nutrition, which is primarily a woman's field in my department, mm, that might undermine my credibility. I have no proof that that was his thinking. (laughs) All I know is that he put the kibosh on this and said, no way. No All right, I'm never calling it the Krebs one. cycle again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, but but the re, what his what he said, his answer was, you know, when they said, "Why don't you want this?" We know everything we need to know about nutrition. Oh, we already wow. know it. That's crazy. This is after the Second World War. Wow, that's and so interesting. This is from a genius. Yeah, right? yeah. Wow, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Okay, one other thing. I, we hit on autophagy. We hit on mitophagy. Yeah. I was reading also that um, spermidine can help with lipophagy as well. Yes. Can you explain that? <laughs> so lipophagy, lipophagy. You have to. So with autophagy and mitophagy, basically, um, something is sequestering rubbish. And yeah. so uh, with, with autophagy, you're going to the cell, you're taking all of these burnt out things from the uh, like organelles from the cell. With mitophagy, you're going into the mitochondria and you're doing that. With lipophagy, you're going and you're grabbing those lipids that really shouldn't be where they are and you are getting rid of them. Um, it also does something awesome. called virophagy. Oh, really? Or viruses. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's so much more research needs to be done, but it's, that's kind of the problem with this molecule It has a terrible name, right? (laughs) I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes something like sperm. I mean, it definitely catches your, it's like, what'd you just say? Kind of sticks (laughs) with you. (laughs) Yeah. Kind of right. You kind of remember it, but terrible name. And it does too much. It's almost too good to be true. As a matter of fact, there was one scientist who said spermidine you know, an anti-aging vitamin. And it's like, oh, really? You know, that is, people are just going to switch off because (laughs) we're used to thinking this, uh, you know, Clearasil, good for acne, right? Right. (laughs) Right. You're not used to finding things that are good for everything. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I'm actually working on some supplements. I haven't even told anybody this, but I guess this is a soft reveal, (laughs) but I've been looking at, um, putting prickly pear cactus into some supplements and I'm looking at all the benefits and I'm like, 
ah, oh, like, do I have to market this as like a weight loss supplement? I mean, it helps with LDL. It helps with insulin sensitivity. It helps with inflammation, lower CRP and all of yeah. these things. But it's like, how do you communicate something that so has so many benefits in a way right. that people will like latch onto? So I completely get that. It's like, all right, we'll hit them with the one they care about the most, which is probably weight loss or in yours. It's like yeah. longevity. It's like, it, it's, it's a baby step. And then it's yeah. awesome though, to be able to hear you come on and thank you for taking the time yeah, to hear like, what exactly? is going on behind the scenes with this thing. I, I, I was, I was texting my friends. I'm like, dude, you guys got to look into spermity this stuff is cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, that's yeah. And it was really funny because we have to be so careful about claims because uh, so much of the work has been done in animals. So that is, yeah, that yeah. is, that's really important. Many, right. many more studies need to be done, but I was just talking about the beauty benefits and saying, okay, it really helps with your hair. And yeah. by the way, I don't dye my hair. So really? Thing, no, I have never dyed my hair. But, um, but what's amazing. So yes, it's possible at this age to have hair like that. And it's so shiny. Like usually you don't see women's hair that like shiny unless they have, they're like brunette and they just dyed it. And yeah. It's all gloss. Like that is I haven't crazy. done anything. Just, you know, I've washed it yesterday, slept on it overnight. Didn't do wow. anything today. Did not put anything on it. Wow. Um, so what, one of the things that spermidine does is it helps with melanin regulation. So we have had people who've said that the different spots that they've been trying to, melasma spots that they're trying to get rid of have resolved. Cool. Um, I can only think, you know, I was like, hmm, there are no studies on that. I can only think it has to do with that melanin nexus. And uh, so when, when hair follicles are in the antigen stage, that is when melanogenesis happens is the only time when pigment is produced. If the hair bulb is in the growth phase. So if it's not okay. in the growth phase, you're never going to get that melanin right. production. So we have actually had 90 year olds send us photographs and sh say, look what's happening. My dark hair. I haven't seen this for decades and I'm getting black hairs in. Wow. Or we had a 79 year old woman who said she was actually not happy. Her hair was growing in dark. It was white at the ends, <laughs> the opposite of what we've been looking at in lockdown. Right. Yeah. And yeah. She said, she said, but I'm really not very happy about this because my friends will think I'm vain and that I've dyed my hair. You're like only in oh, Oxford. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so interesting. I didn't know that there was this, um, cultural, like you should age and die thing in yeah. the UK. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. They're not all like Jackie Collins or, uh, you know, yeah. I'm trying to think of some of the others, Helen Mirren. She's another one who's aging beautifully. Yeah. But well, what a not, rebel you are like out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am trying to, I'm trying to get people to realize that we can live a lot longer. And right? that's the thing. I love what you said. You know, so many people now are talking about health span versus lifespan. Um, I just got to hear, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, um, uh, Kathy Smith. She was like a fitness icon in like the eighties and nineties. Yes, I remember she, she lives here in Utah where I live and she's become a friend and she was speaking at a mastermind I was at and here she oh. is she's I think she's seven is she 70? She, if not, she's like right around there. She's about the same age as my mom. And she is like, I mean, I've actually been to the gym with her and she can kick my butt. Like seriously, <laughs> I can't do some of the things she's doing. She's going across these rings and I'm like, she's like hanging off with one arm and posing for pictures and yep. easily going to the next one and box jumping and toes the bar. And she's so limber and, and, and so vibrant and healthy. Like, yeah. and it's so inspiring to know that like she, not only can you live like that if you take care of yourself, but yes, the burden that you're not going to be my, yes. my grandma was very, very, very healthy and did a lot, you know, spent a, a lot of time in nature, climbing the highest mountains with her husband and just always, you know, kept her relationships rich and was very, always stimulating her mind Did a lot of genealogy research, a very intelligent mm. woman. And, you know, at her 90th birthday party, I hadn't seen her in years. I mean, I probably hadn't seen her in like a decade. And she was like, how is Mackenzie doing? How's Jerem, my kids? And I'm like, wow, you she know, you remember my everything. kids' names? Like you yeah. haven't even met them. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, and yeah. it was amazing. And she did, she has passed away now, but she lived so healthily all the way till the, till when she passed, you know, and it's, it's inspiring to know, like we don't have to become this like yeah. burden or have this horrible end of life. That's kind of the common, you know, accepted way of life is like, yeah, the last 10 years of your life are going to be total yeah. garbage. Like it doesn't yeah. have to be like that anymore. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. Like that. 
Yeah, but yeah. it's also, if you look at the American population, I can't remember the exact statistic. Is it 50% of Americans by age? Mm, I can't, can't exactly remember. Maybe by, by 40, they have a chronic disease. Wow. And you, know, you even think yeah. about, there's so many diseases of inflammation or inflammation. These people yeah. are chronologically older than they should. They're, they're biologically older than their chronological age. Right. And so many Americans have these chronic diseases. And I personally put mental health issues in that chronic disease bucket of yeah. inflammation because yeah. these are cytokine storms. It's inflammation mm -hmm. in the brain that contributes mm -hmm. partially mm -hmm. to this. And at least that's, that is my belief. That's a belief of Ed Bulmore, uh, head of psychiatry at the University of Cambridge. And this is how we need to be thinking about this. Get rid of all these things that, for example, Dave Asprey says are kryptonite to the body, whether yeah. it is industrial seed oils, whether right. it is sugar, whether it is too much, uh, you know, here I am at this time of day, whether it's too much blue light, whether it is not, it's too much work and not enough community and time with your family and love and yeah. right. 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 And I love that, you know, and at some of the, because I'm in the keto world and I go to these conferences, a lot of the topics, especially when they're the more medical ones are talking about brain health and Alzheimer's mm. and dementia and mental illness. And so much of what they're talking about is how it's, it's, it's a metabolic issue as well. Yeah. And it's cool that spermidine is like mimicking some of the, you know, what you would have to do through high intensity interval training or intermittent fasting or something like that to get into like, you know, maybe longer than intermittent fasting really to get into autophagy and to yeah. be able to start doing that process with something that quite frankly, like I'm so open to these things because yeah, I wish we lived like they live in Japan. I wish that we lived the Okinawa lifestyle, yeah, you know, but yeah. we're not going to, we're yeah, not, we're I was, not going I was to. telling my daughter yeah. this last night too. I'm like, we literally are like that movie Wally. -E. Like that's how we live in America. <laughs> like we like go into our garage, which is literally still our house and sit in a seat to be transported on our butts to everywhere we go. We don't even have to walk to the train. We don't even have to walk. Like we get a front parking spot and we barely walk in the store and get back in our little seat and go back into our house. Like it's insane. You know, so we're not moving most people. I'd say, you know, the last, at the last time they checked the obesity rate in the United States was 42.4%. I'm sure it's higher wow. now. Wow. It's almost half. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. So I'm like, okay, we have to look at reality here. We're telling, you know, yeah. people know that they quote unquote, shouldn't just eat fast food and candy and chocolate and soda all day and that they should exercise more, but they just not gonna. So if we can get something in their systems that can help them get some of these health benefits and they can start yeah. feeling better, maybe they'll get the motivation to start doing some of these things. Cause that's, that's one, that's something that, uh, like troubles me, I guess a lot as a yeah. health coach is like, how do you get people from, I don't care. And I don't have the energy to even care to like, okay, I can, I, I think I can do this, you know? And so yeah. those little things like this, that can help people get into a little mm. bit better space. I, I find them incredibly helpful yeah. and exciting. And, um, I, I yeah. find it, I find it helpful and exciting to go down you know, a store aisle now or a grocery store aisle. And I see where the change is happening, that people, yeah. are, you know, companies are starting to switch out right. uh, high fructose corn syrup right. for a better type of sugar, or they're adding right. in healthier fats or we're right. finding, you know, nut butters right. that are going in to give some fat and some protein. And right. these without... are options as mothers <laughs> that we can give to our kids. Right. Right. Without, you know, canola oil and sugar Ugh. added to them. They're like, actually, yeah. you don't have to add that to your peanut butter yeah. surprise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Who knew, right? Yeah. Um, and unfortunately it's exactly the same in the supplement world. We do not need a lot of these fillers and additives right, right. and definitely we do not need these extra omega-6s that can go rancid. So it's, it is all about removing kryptonite from the, from the lifestyle of yeah. the client, right? Yeah. So, um, where can people learn more about Primadine? Well, you can go to oxfordhealthspan.com and uh, you can take a look there and learn more. We're about to launch a gluten-free version. Oh, wow. That'll cool. probably be out in another, oh, 
three weeks from the time that this podcast goes out. We're, we'll officially launch it in the new year. Okay. We'll soft launch it before then. Okay. And uh, that also is a product entirely sourced in Japan. It's cool. all from Okinawa in this Very case. Very cool. Yeah. So sourced and manufactured in Okinawa and then packaged in the United States. Everything is done in FDA registered facilities, both in Japan and also in the United States, because I want someone to be checking the standards on these manufacturing yeah. lines yeah, and really awesome. looking over the label and saying, okay, did you test for this? And is it really the amount that you're saying? Awesome. So, that is awesome. I yeah. really appreciate that commitment to quality. And where do you ship to? Which countries do you ship to? Well, we ship to, we ship to our 52nd country. Nice. <laughs> okay. I always get so asked this by like, my Aust- <laughs> yeah, by like Australian people, European people, you they're like, yep. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Just try we, to buy it. We, and ship, see what happens. we ship, we ship to Australia. We ship, uh, we ship to Europe. We manufacture in Europe as well. We manufacture in the United States. Nice. Uh, it's also an FDA registered facility in Europe. Um, awesome. we manufacture in the UK because we are now an island post-Brexit. And <laughs> so I have to manufacture here <laughs> as well, but okay. yeah, pretty much everywhere. Awesome. Awesome. And then if anybody wants to follow you, um, yeah. or find you on social media, what, what do you recommend? Well, I've got my own personal Instagram handle, which is Leslie's new prime. And I do have a YouTube channel and I know I should really be doing more videos, but I am so busy right now. Yeah, I get uh, it. You know, two children, the dog, the <laughs> business, uh, also the Oxford longevity project, which is totally separate. That's just oh, wow. to, you know, look at, yeah, it's just Oxford longevity project.org. Um, cool. we did interview Dale Bredesen. We interviewed another researcher from Ireland Very just cool. to, look at the connection between autophagy and Alzheimer's. Nice. And I'll definitely yeah. check that out. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll email, I'll email you the link. Okay. Thanks so much, Leslie. Yeah. This was awesome. Thank you so <laughs> much. Really I'm fun. seriously, Thank guys, you. if you didn't watch this on YouTube, you need to just, just go look real quick. <laughs> just go to <laughs> youtube.com slash coach Sarah Garrison. <laughs> just see what I'm talking about. Like it's, I, it's, I, it's, I feel like a jerk saying this sometimes, but I'm like, when someone's telling you something and they clearly got it, they clearly got what they're talking. It's like hard not to pay attention and you clearly got it. Like, and I, I well, thank th- you. like, I'm so inspired by your story. It's so cool. Like the way your life path went and now what you're able to bring to the world because of it. And I'm no, like, dang girl, you. you got that stuff fixed in three to six months. That is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it can be you. done. Everyone else yeah. can do it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So inspiring. Well, thank Kate. you so much. Really yeah. a privilege and loved hanging out with you. Thank you.